Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can connect up the world's smallest controller to the Nintendo Switch. So this is absolutely tiny, this controller here. It's made by 8-bit dough and believe it or not, it's got a 20-hour battery life on it. Apparently, I haven't tested it for that long, but it's chargeable, so you just recharge it and then you should get near to 20 hours out of it. Now, with the Nintendo Switch, obviously we're lacking many buttons on here. This would be more useful maybe for something like emulation on your PC. But the main thing we're lacking is the home button. On other 8-bit do controllers, you just have to press select and down and it will take you home. Not on this one. Any combination I do, it doesn't appear to work. I don't know whether that could be updated with firmware or not. But anyway, we do have a right button there, left button, and we've got our A, B, X and Y. This will work the same as plus, minus, and we've got our D-pad. D-pad is actually doing the same thing as an analog stick, although it is digital. So to connect up two of them, which is what I want to do, we need to have two adapters. And the adapters we're going to be using are 8-bit Do again, and this is a Bluetooth wireless receiver. This is the one in its packaging here. Price of them, the adapters are seen them on eBay for 12 UK pounds. These ones you can get on eBay for 10 UK pounds. If you're looking at Amazon, you're going to be paying a little bit more. So dollars wise, you're going to find that for under 15 and you're going to find these for under 20 US dollars. Now, a problem with them is they're quite wide, so they don't actually fit into the ports on the dock unless you just do one at a time. If you're just buying one of these, it's fine, but two of these will not fit in because the space in here doesn't allow you to do that. Also, if you want to plug it in the back, it doesn't fit in because if you're using the Nintendo supplied HDMI cable and power cable, again, these are too wide. So what I've done is I've just got a little USB hub here. Don't have to be expensive. It also works in this little pound one here from the pound shop. So a cheap one will do. Right, okay, on this one here, we have a little sync button up at the top and there's also a little red flashing light in here when you plug it into a USB port. Now it is hard to set up to begin with but once you get it set up it's relatively easy. So what I need to do is connect it up using the iOS. That's how I've done it. There might be other ways of doing it. I don't know if there's quicker ways. I've been mucking about with this for quite a few hours and it's the best way that I found. So we've got iOS here. You've got to press start and A. So if you have a look here this is a picture of the little this is called a zero, it's called 8 bit do zero controller, and uh, this one here is start and this is select. It's the same as being plus on the pro controller and minus on the pro controller or the joy cons. So that's what we're going to be doing, right? So we're going to plug in that one there to there. Well, actually, first things first, let's plug in our dock so it's going to be working up on TV. So the switch is in the dock now. If you have a look up there, it's up on TV. And now I've plugged these two in. You can see they don't fit next to each other because there's not enough room there. Yeah, you can see what I mean. So we have to plug that in there. If you have a look closely, you will see that there is a little red light flash in there. So now we're going to turn on these. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the previous pairings. Because if they were connected up to, for example, your uh, PC, then you want to delete that pairing. So right now, can you see I'm holding down this button here for three seconds. And then once it doesn't do anything anymore, that means it's been turned off. So there we go, just leave that one there for the time being. I'm going to do the same with this one here. So turn it on using this one on the right hand side. And now I'm going to turn it off using this one here and hold it down for three seconds. Remember, I've had these previously paired up with the Nintendo Switch, so it's going to be easier for me. Right now, to turn them on, we're going to put it into the iOS mode. So we're going to hit this button here and A at the same time. So hold them both down and now it's going to be blinking three times and that means it's in that mode and now we've got the flashing one here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the sync button on this left hand one here well, actually see it's paired up already because it's uh, it was previously paired up from before let's just see if that's working up on screen right so if you have a look can you see it's still not working up on screen so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it off I'm not going to touch the actual dongle down there I'm just going to turn this off here and then when I turn it back on it should start working now if I go to B, there you go. You can now see that that one's working. So they are a hassle to set up. But basically what I find is that if you delete the pairing from before, then if you press the start and A or the plus and A at the same time, and then it will put it into iOS mode. And then when it's flashing fast like that, if you just hit the sync button on here, 
then they should pair up, but it won't work after they've paired up. You then need to turn this off and back on again, and then it will start to work. So let's try to pair up this controller here with this one. You can see that this is solid red, so this is the one that's paired up with the blue one, and now I'm gonna be pairing up this red controller with this one here. So we're gonna turn it on and A at the same time. Remember, A on this one is here, similar to the Xbox. It's not A where the uh, Pro Controller and the Joy-Cons are, so don't get mixed up on that, but this is actually working as A on the Nintendo Switch. So let me hold these two down. There you go, you can see it's blinking three and that's synced up already so let's have a look up on screen let's see if that's working again you see it's not working up there but yet I have got the solid red light on that one there so now we're going to do the same again we're going to turn it off and then we're just going to turn it back on we're not touching the dongle and now it should start working there we go so now I will have both of them working up on screen there that one and then that one Right, let me just show you the inputs of them so you know what the actual buttons are. So we're gonna go down to system settings, press A. Controllers and sensors. Test input devices. And if we have a look here, you can see A, B, X, Y, R, L. That's plus, minus. And can you see here the D-pad's not working because it's the same as the analog stick. The analog sticks do not get registered on this page here, okay? But I've got no home button, so you're still gonna have to have your controller handy, like a Joy-Con or your Pro Controller to actually make it work. And obviously it's the same with this one here. And as far as lag's concerned, it does seem pretty responsive. So if I was to do these two here, you can do a slow motion test. to see if you're happy with the lag. Right, okay, so we need to go home, or in this case, I can just hold down B. B, B, B. Right, let's do a little bit of Mario Kart, because obviously we're limited to the games we can play because they have to be games that only have a small amount of buttons, so this would be ideal for Mario Kart. Right, okay. So we're going to go to multiplayer, two player, Grand Prix, obviously motion controls and none of that stuff works on here. But you will be able to have the full experience on here because you've got all the buttons that you need. So I'm just going to show this is obviously going to be uh, on the left hand side of the screen. This is going to be right. So I'm just going to do a quick bit of gameplay on both of them and then that will be it. Okay, so you can see now. Right, so let's do a little bit of Mario on this one. does appear to be working just, just fine. So apart from the novelty, the fact that they are the, the world's smallest controller, uh, obviously they're not as good as Joy-Cons, but they are very small and very light. So if you had these anyway, maybe because you like to do emulation on your Android phone, then this could be useful if you're having a few people over and you wanted like a cheaper way of having three and four player Mario Kart. But you get the idea there. You can see that that one's working absolutely fine. Right, let me show you this one now. And obviously you've got your plus here as well. Right, this one, this is uh, the one now on the left hand side. So your hands probably would cramp up if you were playing this for a long time because obviously it's very small. But they are nice and light. So uh, yeah, that is it. Let me know what you think of these 
little 8-bit do zero controllers. Good thing about them is they are cheap and I do think they do have their uses, probably more for the retro games on emulators, but just out of a novelty I wanted to connect it up to the Nintendo Switch. So I hope you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.